Oh, um, hey, C-3PO, Mandalorian. I didn't hear you come in the front door. You must have blown up the back one. No matter, though, I know why you're here. Uh, you're here to pick up your child, and I know exactly where he is. Let me get him for you. Uh, GB-1, uh, where's Grogu? <laughs> what do you mean you don't know where he is? Didn't you put that tracker on him like I told you to? GB-1, you've been putting us in a lot of harm's way lately, but this one tops the list. Uh... No matter, though, we can actually use the ship scanner to try to find him, but we got to build a likeness of some kind. Oh, I think I know exactly what to do. Uh, it's going to take a few moments. Uh, you know, that child likes to eat everything under the sun, so you see, he's eating. Uh, let me, let me, let me figure this out. Just a couple moments. Hey, everyone, and welcome to Groove Builders, the show where we create together. I'm your hostess, Sorderly Cone, and these are my, uh, friends. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at the Metaller Star Wars Mandalorian the Child and everything you need to know to get this build looking amazing. Now, what techniques do we need to know? What tools are we going to use? And will this thing actually all go together? That's a great question, Groovers. Let's get down to the workbench and try to build this thing as quickly as possible. We have it all seven pages needed to build the child yes there may be a lot of pages here but it looks like the pieces are pretty big the first thing we're going to talk about is building grogu and how to get that perfect face next we'll talk about the base of the carrier including the big egg-shaped part 37 and finally we'll talk about the carrier top and how to put it all together there's a lot of curved shapes in this build I can only imagine the kind of tools we'll need. Luckily, we have a tool expert. Timothy? I hope he's okay. I have over 55 years of plot armor! Not even a Mandalorian can get through that! But this thing eats my berries, and now you want me to help find it? I did just get some cream! The Metal Earth Star Wars The Child is a model that will test your covering ability! With the right tools in hand, you will make easy work of this very never. The tools you will need are... Nippers, tweezers, tapping punches, cylinder tools, and fondant tools. I can't wait for some berries and cream! Thanks, Timothy. I'm glad to see you're okay, even though you're a little bit over-eager to get rid of our little friend. Now, as always, these are just our suggestions, and you really don't need anything but nippers and tweezers to get the job done. But of course, having the right tools will make everything a lot easier for you, especially a spoon with those little cylinders. Okay, now we've looked at our instructions, and we have all of our tools. There's only one thing left for you to do, and that's to press that like and subscribe button. We're currently trying to get to 4,000 subscribers here, and really could use your help. Uh, no pressure, though. Not that we're trying to, you know, find a child or anything. <laughs> C-3PO being held at gunpoint, uh, you know. Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. We're going to be making all kinds of cool projects in the new year, and I'm so glad to have you here with me. All right, now let's get down to the workbench and build this little guy. The Child from the Metaller Star Wars line is a build that might look hard at first. However, with the right techniques and tools, your child will be on its way to a galaxy or desk not so far away. Let's get started with our first couple of pieces. Grabbing part one, we need to make a cone shape. I'm going to use my dapping tool here to roll over the part. While rolling, I apply even pressure to ensure a good shaping. If done well, you can lock the tabs on the back by feeding them into the insertion holes. There we go, the first part all done. This technique is one we'll use over and over with this build, but with different sized tools to get the right shape like our arms with part three and four, except with these guys, I will use some smaller mandrills. Rolly, 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 and boom, both of our arms are complete. Let's go ahead and attach them onto part one. Just some twists, and there we go. Our neck detail has much of the same, but the parts are a little bit thinner. After attaching parts 9 and 10 at the center, we need to get these parts on top of part 11. We can use our technique from earlier to get part 11 shaped correctly. Then, line up the borders of 9 and 10 and let those tabs fall into place. 
this might take a few tries and some time, but with a little bit of patience, we can get it done. And there we go, let's move on to part 12. This little part is mostly like the others, but with a small twist of that dovetailed part. I found the best thing to do was to bend this part of the piece with the rest of the part. Then bend the tabs back to that 90 degree angle and feed the tabs into their insertion holes. This way you don't see them. You don't always have to do this, but right now, what a good opportunity to try it. Now let's form that face. Part 13 has multiple things that I like to call leaves that make up the part. We need to match up all of the edges of these leaves to avoid any gaps. Yes, these gaps are the enemy of any metal model builder and will make your model look bad and may contribute to the whole thing not coming together correctly. To avoid gaps. On parts like this, I would use my dapping set or fondant tools. These are great because of their rounded edges that allow you to shape the parts evenly. You might notice that some parts of Grogu's face have less than a spherical nature to them. To help correct with this, we can either use a smaller shaping tool or we can use our tweezers to tidy it up a little bit more. Close up that front and let's put that chin on. Ah, so cute. Uh, let's add the ears. Part 15 and 16 need to be bent in half, allowing the green paint to be on one side and the pink paint to be on the other. Once we have our ears correctly bent, we need to roll them, just like we did earlier. With these parts being twice as thick than normal, you know it might be a little harder to get this done right. With a little extra pressure and being sure to connect the ears at the bottom, all we need to do is connect these guys with a little twist. Very nice. Uh, let's go ahead and put this all together with our sleeves upper body, and head. There we go! Now, let's get started on the carrier. The first thing we need to do is get to work on part 17. This is pretty straightforward. Just bend the edges down and make some boxes with all the parts marked 18 before securing them with a nice twist. Next, we move on to part 19, which is the first of many edge pieces. These pieces need to be bent properly so that we don't have any gaps where they connect but they're also kind of tricky to handle because of how thin they are. In this case, you can use part 17 as a guide to see how much we need to bend 19, but I found the easiest way to get the right shape is to use the curling Christmas ribbon technique. Yes, Christmas curling ribbon techniques do come in handy this time of year. Simply take your part and with our tool, start on one edge and run the tool down the length of the piece. And just like that, you should have a nice little curl. Try not to go too much here. Uh, we're not trying to make a, you know, Goldilocks curl, just a half moon one. Now all we need to do is match up our tabs to our insertion holes and connect them together. You might have to play around with these parts a little bit to get everything in line and get the tabs bent over. If you need to, temporarily twist some of the tabs at the edge parts to help you get the stability needed to assemble the upper half. Afterwards, when everything is in place and we're ready to put Grogu inside, we can go back and bend these tabs over properly. Be patient and take your time here. It's never a race. And speaking of not being in a race, after forming some of the add-on detail, we move on to part 37. This part is the whole bottom of our model, so it's super important to bend it correctly. Making sure the pointed edges are on the outside, we can begin to form our part. I use both my dapping and fondant tools to help me get a really nice edge. If you don't have these, a spoon can work just as well. Once we have a really nice rounded edge and all of our gaps are gone, we can begin to secure our tabs, working our way from the outside in. Make sure these tabs are extremely well connected. You don't want them popping out later, and if they do, they'll be near impossible to get back in. Add that little back detail, and we're ready to work on that upper. The upper part of our model is, to say the least, a little tedious, especially if we don't match up everything just right. What we have to keep in mind is that we're creating one big dome. 
Knowing what part of the dome we are forming at any given time can help us judge how much to form each step. Another way to do this is to use the connecting edges of the bigger parts. The edges here have very little metal, but they also have a curve, so we can follow that if we bend down this part 90 degrees. For part 40, they're located on the sides. For part 46, they're in the middle. Regardless of what you choose to do, we need to make sure all of our edges match up. By rolling our parts just like we did before with our lower end, we can get a nice smooth forming effect. Getting some of these tabs secured can be a little tricky because of the small bits of metal that we're dealing with. If we need to, just like before, we can temporarily twist our tabs just to make sure that everything gets into place. Then at the end, we'll go back and change them the way they're supposed to be. This little trick is super handy with this model and I can't understate that. Our hood is looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and put our last couple of pieces together. There we have it, the Metal Earth Premium Series Star Wars Mandalorian, The Child. Yes, still a big mouthful, but doesn't this thing look awesome when complete? Uh, there's actually multiple ways of displaying it. I chose to do it just with the stand here for ease for my desk, but you can also hang it by a little hook. Kind of cool. I've also seen people out there do some really neat magnet stuff and have it floating, which, I mean, is really neat, but I didn't have the time to even try it. Now, was this model hard? Well, not not really. Yes, there are some difficult bits, of course. Uh, doming is one of the harder things to do when it comes to 3D metal models, but this one here, because the domes are kind of big, uh, well, they're a little bit easier. Using a spoon, like I said multiple times throughout this video, can really make this little doming part here on the bottom a lot easier to do than just using your tweezers. Now, you do have to be careful not to overbend the metal, so there is a little bit of a technique and kind of uh, a little bit of a feel that you have to develop, but once you do, you should be able to get the shaping on the bottom here quite easily. Now, Grogu is also maybe a little harder, especially that little head here on the top, trying to get that one just bent right here. You can see it kind of goes down and kind of bends back in on itself. Well, that shaping can be a little bit difficult too, and having something small enough and round enough, if you don't have a cake tool like I do, it can be a little trickier to get that piece. Overall, I really do think that Grogu here is a great model for not only beginners, but expert modelers too, but for very different reasons. There really isn't a whole lot here to be concerned about for a new modeler. Yes, like I said, the doming and things are difficult, but for a more expert modeler, because this model comes together so easily, if you're looking to really challenge yourself and see if you can get all these little uh, nooks and crannies to be completely gone, well, this is a great build to try that on, especially Especially with Grogu's face, I've seen a lot of builders out there have a really hard time with it. And if you consider yourself an expert, trying to get this thing completely lined up correctly all the way through would be a great place to start. Alright Groovers, that brings us to the end of our show. I had a really good time building Grogu with you, and if you guys had a good time, don't forget to press that like button. For more videos like this, hit subscribe as well, as we got all kinds of really cool content coming out in the future. Do you want to help the channel grow and build really cool models like Grogu too? Well, check out GroupBuilders.ca. We have all kinds of really cool models on there at great prices with fast shipping to the United States and Canada. Until next time, Groovers, keep building. All right, GB1, our Grogu model is complete. Time to put them in the scanner. <laughs>